And then we've got, uh, I don't hate coming in with this little gem. You're saying it wrong, and the name is not Get Jacked, it's GT Jack 3 d I think you misread it somehow. Yo, what is up everyone? Hope all is going well for you. Welcome back to Get Jacked. Now, today we are here on the official server again, continuing where we left off, but we are going to be doing things a little bit differently today. Now, what I need is I need kibble dinosaurs again, and the reason being is we're going to be taming up a Rex for the next video, and I need scorpion kibble. I'm, I, I want to tame up the Rex with kibble, and I don't want to do it with prime. I want it to be a really good tame, because your, <laughs> the first Rex has to be awesome. So that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be getting kibble dinosaurs. Um, I need the scorpions, of course, for the Rex. Then we're going to need more dilos because my, my previous kibble dinosaurs were all killed by aloe spawning in the base, unfortunately. So we need more. But the reason this video is going to be a little different is I'm actually going to be going over your comments, the tips, the tricks that you've shown me along the way, which have definitely helped. Like, I can't say that I know everything in ARK, and I can't say that many people do, because there is so much going on in this game, and that's why we have each other. This community has really helped a lot of people, I think, with uh, ideas on how to do things and just, you know, tips on everything. So I'm going to be going through those comments in the background we're not going to be doing this like a traditional episode but i really wanted to read your comments but you know we got a lot to do on the official server too so i can't take time to do a separate video you know reading the comments and stuff because i really want to keep going here so what we're going to do is oh one thing i did want to show you check out this terror bird so look at the level the health gain come on a bird i don't get it oh nice little dance there dude like, these things are so OP. So anyway, I need to go out. We need to find us some scorpions. But anyway, let's get into our first little thing here. Now, it comes from, let's see here, the Divine Gamers. It says, hey, bud, just a friendly tip. If you level up while sick, you remove your sickness. Same for infected dodos. Now, I, I like this. I appreciate it. But also, just to keep in a little side note, you have to level up health to actually get rid of that point. And then we've got DW Gaming. Hey Jack, great vid man. Just had a quick question. Why haven't you done more Scorched Earth? So the reason I haven't done more Scorched Earth basically is because I want this series to actually become the new Scorched Earth series. So I'll be transferring this character over. We'll be doing all of the same Scorched Earth stuff here on official. So that's kind of what I've been waiting for. And I've also got hopefully kind of working on some PvP uh, Scorched Earth stuff to throw in on a non- offline raid protection official server if that makes any sense so we'll actually be doing some normal arc pvp in the coming future um, but that'll probably be on scorched earth to start out with so thanks a lot for that question i know a lot of people have been wondering about scorched earth but anyway we've got brenson brosh and he asks how fast do they make cementing paste and how much max can they hold now he's talking about the snails and they produce one cementing paste per minute and then they can hold a max of a hundred so it's good for single players to have one or two of those but if you have a big tribe you're gonna want a ton of them now the next question we've got is coming from Salam H and they say the Packy Rhino dude is a beast he would be awesome for defending your vase with a purple fart and leading dinosaurs into your pen with its red fart so I didn't first off I didn't know they were farts I thought they were pheromones <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'll take your word for it. Now, I'm, I'm going to try and put this to test. I would like to use this to get die morphs and stuff, so I'll definitely be trying that out here in the future, but thanks for letting me know that that's what they're going to do for me. <laughs> and then we've got, uh, I don't hate coming in with this little gem. You're saying it wrong, and the name is not Get Jacked. It's GT Jack 3 d I think you misread it somehow. So I think you're right. I have been saying my, my own name wrong this entire time, and I'll have to, I'll have to get like the, the intro figured out and stuff, but I'll start working on that. We'll, we'll get that fixed. Um, and then we've got... <laughs> Yep, 675 coming in with, and this is fitting as well. I have a question on how you get your scorpion eggs. I have two, <laughs> two scorpion, one male, one female. The female won't drop any eggs. You know why? Uh, th the reason behind it is you need a lot of scorpions. They don't drop them very or very quickly, so they're actually a pretty rare drop from them. You have to get a lot of them in a row to actually start boosting those eggs. Now, oviraptors also don't work on scorpions for some reason. You can't breed scorpions, so you can't get eggs that way. So what I would recommend to boost that is to actually be in the area at all times. So when you're AFK, just stay near your, your, you know, your kibble pen or whatever you've got all of your kibble dinosaurs in, and then when you come back, 
back, you'll probably have more eggs because you've been in that area and they've been producing them. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Now the next one is going to come from slom h here as well and this one's uh this one i've seen before other people have wondered this and this is like a quick one that i can answer now it says i'm on a pve server and i just tamed an argent but i can't grab wild dinos is this normal so when you're on pvp or pve servers sorry you can't pick up wild dinosaurs you can pick up tame dinosaurs but not wild ones because then that would allow you to drop them into other people's bases and, and on a pve server that would be almost a form of pvp so that's why they have that disabled unless you're on some for of an unofficial server that has that activated. Now this one I just found interesting actually from Aztec Gaming and it says the dung beetle and snail don't have emotes because the level up animation is the same as the cuddle animation and you can't breed them. So that's interesting. So if you ever notice when you level up some of the smaller dinosaurs or the ones that can't be bred including the scorpion here, they don't have that level up animation because they just ported over all the cuddle animations and they're the same thing. So I wish they would actually get us some level up animations on the non-breedables because it really doesn't make sense that they don't have them. So I just thought that was a cool little point. Now, um, getting to the actual gameplay, I actually found this 125 scorpion which is probably going to take a ridiculously long amount of time compared to all the other ones but I wanted, really wanted to see what the difference in you know level or sorry not levels but stats were on these huge scorpions compared to the little baby like 20s through like 50 that I've got laying around down here now the next one's going to come from let's see here it's actually not a question but it's from Anis oh god Pl Platy Rykos Gaming? Okay, we'll go with that. So, he says, actually, the Packy Rhino's Calming Pheromone Spray works on aggro creatures. It just doesn't work on anything bigger than an aloe. So, what I was wondering is, if things are already aggroed on me, is it gonna, it, will it unaggro them with the pheromone spray? So, that's what he says. I, I'm believing him on this one. I think that's true um, for one smaller than an aloe. It might not work on, like, Carnos and stuff, but definitely, like, the smaller dinosaurs will unaggro from you uh, when you use the pheromone spray them so that's pretty cool like i said we do need to test that out so the uh next one coming from ender dirt master and it says hi get jacked what do you use to record your videos i love your vids by the way now thank you for one and uh what i use to record my videos actually i switch it up i know a lot of people wonder this i'm sure a lot of people are trying to record their gameplay and stuff arc is definitely something a lot of people want to share and whatnot which is awesome about it now the main thing that I use is OBS. I use OBS for a lot of things. Definitely when I'm recording voice and video at the same time. Now, shadow play is also something I use if I'm only re recording gameplay and then adding voice later on. Now, shadow play, it just doesn't seem to work as well with the voice recording at the same time. I don't know. It, it glitches out sometimes and can get crackly, so I like to use OBS. So, thanks for that question. I know a lot of people wonder that and have asked that along the way. So, anyway, the next one is coming from Saber Gamer 8 and it says use attack my target on a dead body to instantly call the moss chops on a dead body don't use it on living creatures or he'll instantly run <laughs> so that is a good thing to keep in mind I am gonna start using that moss chop so I'm excited to put that to use and uh, the next one coming from Rudolfo Mandalvado sorry Maldonado there we go. So he says, could have gone after saber tooth salmon for fish or for prime fish meat. Just use a sickle. So in one of the videos, I was trying to get that prime fish meat for actually taming the moss chops, and I was having a really difficult time getting it. So it turns out that you actually just have to use a sickle to harvest them, and you should get a lot of prime fish meat. So that's good to know, and definitely <laughs> something I'm gonna use in the future. So the next one is coming from. Bryce shared in here and he asked have you ever thought about live streaming the official server now I do actually live stream the official server That's why I kind of wanted to answer this one because I get this often now If you want to catch those definitely head over to twitch and just follow the channel and you'll be able to see those I usually try and do one to two days a week at least starting out now since there's been so much support for the series And I really appreciate it I've been trying to do that live stream just to kind of give people a little bit more of an idea of what's going on here So anyway next questions coming from James Gray here, and he says, keep in mind though, if they make the dino AI smart enough to go around rocks and stuff when you whistle, the wild ones will be smart enough to do the same when you try and tame them. And I really like this comment because I was complaining about how the whistles commands, they can't run around rocks and go up hills and stuff, but it makes sense. And you gotta kind of, kind of gotta, um, be careful what you wish for, because if they start making the AI better, we won't have these uh, cheaty 
taming techniques of hiding on cliffs or behind rocks. So I thought that was an interesting take on things. Just wanted to bring that up. Now, next one coming in from Patrick Adams. He says, how come when you go into the swamps, you can build a base in peace? And I, when I go into the swamps, I get killed by everything. Well, the reason is there's editing. Now, I, I don't want you guys to think that I'm like perfect at this game and awesome and great and whatever. And I, I mean, I've gotten good at it, but it took a long time. I had to edit out a lot of those deaths because no one wants to see someone die millions of times. It just takes a lot of perseverance to get a base going and you just can't give up. Once you get into higher levels, like once you get like level 50 plus, you're good. Like you can start taking on that kind of stuff, but early on it's really frustrating. So I just wanted to get to that as well. Now the next one comes in from Azure RT. So they say I also heard that cooked meat regen health a lot faster. <laughs> it regens health a lot faster, yeah. So this is a good point to make. If you are on your dinosaur and they got damaged and you want to force feed them meat, you can actually force feed them cooked meat and it's going to give them more health than if you would have given them just regular raw meat. So that's a good point and a good thing to keep in mind as well. Now the next one is going to be coming in from Flynn McGurk and he says, I've been looking all over the map for the spot you built but I can't find it. Can you tell me where the coordinates are please? So a lot of people have asked this as well. Now it's right on the edge of the swamp and the redwoods right at the coordinates 65, 45. So that's where you should find it. I know it's going to have a bunch of stuff all over it so you won't recognize it. It'll have trees and things. But once you clear them out, this is the spot. Now the next one, let's see here, where are we going? It's from Immortal Gaming, and he says, if you find the small rocks, basically, if you harvest them, you get twice as much because there are a ton of them stacked on top of each other. And this is kind of true. Now, it is really good to get the small river rocks, and they're all over the swamp, so I can take advantage of this as well. But when you take an Anki to those, you get a lot of flint because they are, like he says, stacked on top of each other. But you get a lot of metal, too. A decent amount, actually, from not having to go up to a mountain. So that's really useful as well. So look out for those river rocks. They're always of use early on in the game. Now, we've got H. Gerskow, I think that's right, and it says right click to drop the torch on the ground. Now, this might seem like a little thing, but actually, I he did, until he said this, I totally forgot that you could even do that. When you're out and about, and you have your torch out, you and you, you, know, you take your pickaxe to farm something, it gets really dark because you're not holding the torch, obviously. What you can do is just right click, and it drops the torch on the ground. You can use it in that area to give you light, and then you can pick it back up and use it again. So, I definitely need to start utilizing that, because I totally forgot that that was even a thing in the game but anyway now I'm actually building a little bit of a section onto the base to add you know to put these scorpions in uh, but the next one relating to building here uh, comes from hardcore fresh and it says when you press Q it switches to all the available snap points helps with getting things lined up easier now I was struggling with them putting the metal on the base so I appreciate this um, you actually use Q and it'll show you all the different orientations that that piece can go in so you don't have to keep trying to just line it up yourself so that's really uh, handy I'll definitely be putting that to use here in this build so like I said we're actually throwing up a new area here Year. Thought I'd, I figured I'd just give a little bit of an idea of what's going on. So I'm gonna build. Okay, that just broke. Cool. All right, but I'm gonna build this into a whole nother like basically kibble dino storage area because we don't want them to be out in the open where they can just be picked off and and trolled or whatever. So anyway, gonna keep building this in the background. The uh, next question is coming from Matt Olivis. Uh, We'll go with that. And it says, you actually don't need sunlight when using a greenhouse. As long as the greenhouse ceiling is above the plant, it doesn't matter what is past it. You can armor up your glass. So that is a really good tip. Um, I didn't notice that before, actually. I thought you actually had to have sunlight for the greenhouse pieces. So now I'll probably build a nice metal part over the greenhouse area when we start upgrading that so that people aren't breaking in easily. But that's an interesting thing. I wonder how long that'll last in the game. But definitely keep that in mind because that greenhouse glass is weak and it is expensive. So anyway, next one coming in from... Cheedsicle here and he asked how many hours would you say you have put in to get this far now from level one starting out on this server now this official server of course and just getting the levels was the hard part but once we got the base going and everything we started rolling but it took I think up to this point we're at about 200 hours in the last month on this server just me I'm putting in all this work so I really like it I mean it's been fun and I don't regret any of it but it's been 
quite a few hours put into this and uh, definitely expect that if you want to build solo or anything on a PvP server. And this one here is going to be from Cory Craft and he says, Hey man, if you want an easier way to get food, just grab some rare mushrooms from the beaver dams and about 100 rare mushrooms weigh a pound, restore 2,500 food, and never rot. Only takes 4 mushrooms to max out your food bar, 25 food each shroom. So there's a lot of information here, and I'm glad he posted this. So this is a really good part of, you know, living in the swamp, is you get a ton of mushrooms in the area, and you can, you know, live off those just eating. Now, the only downside to eating mushrooms over eating meat is if you're injured mushrooms will not heal you they won't heal you at all to actually help you out um, so meat heals you so actually if you're eating mushrooms when you're injured you'll actually use a lot more food if that makes sense because you're not healing so you're taking from your food pool to actually heal your health pool so that's kind of how that works but anyway the uh, next one coming in it will be from let's see here get wrecked okay so we've got get wrecked over here it says the farm or farm the swamp cave for a good quality rod or get lucky in a yellow beacon mastercraft or ascendant rods get upwards of four blueprints from one fish and are often ascendant or mastercraft quality also harvest saber tooth salmon with a sickle like we said last time or one of the last ones so anyway this is a good thing i we went fishing and we didn't get really any blueprints now blueprints come from some really good fishing rods so i'm definitely looking out for a good blueprint for that so we can test out what's going on with those but that's definitely a good thing to keep in mind if you're only going to get really basic resources when you're using a regular fishing rod but you can also get better fishing rods from fishing so it's just kind of one of those things where it's an endless circle of constantly fishing if you want to get those so anyway the next one is from zilla jrbg and it says get jacked hey dude how to shoot while you're riding okay we'll go with that <laughs> so this is the thing I, I use a lot pretty often actually on a lot of the mounts is you know shooting my crossbow or gun or whatever while riding now all you have to do is on mounts that it's available on it'll it'll light up your hotbar showing that you can use it and all you got to do is actually just select it and you'll be able to pull out your weapon now you can't attack with the dinosaur unless it's got a C attack um, a C attack can be used while shooting so that's pretty cool but anyway that's how you actually use your weapons and whatnot while riding a dinosaur now the next question or comment sorry is gonna come from Daniel Loyola and he's asking which way basically how do you solo tame a Quetzal if you have to by yourself so basically one way is to take scorpions you can carry one scorpion with an argent and then you can carry one with a grappling hook and you can kind of knock them out that way this that is gonna require a really high level scorpion or two to actually be able to do it now what you can also do is oh we actually got some eggs here take a break from the the tips here but these things are already generating eggs which is freaking awesome but anyway back to the back to the question uh, how I prefer to tame one is to actually ride your Argent or Pterodon probably be, because it's faster and you whistle attack my target on the Pteranodon while you're grappled to it so the grapple will pull you along and you'll actually follow the Quetzal through the air as it tries to escape your Pteranodon and you can keep tranking it like that it takes a little bit more time and effort but it's actually a really nice way to do it and we'll be doing it probably next week because we're going to be needing a Quetzal here on the official server anyway. So, the next one is coming from Stickman Lab Sub, and it says, Tip, pumping move speed on a Sarko doesn't make it faster in water, only on land. It was tested, just search up arc only movement speed Sarko and a video showing this or whatever. Okay, but anyway, what he's saying is true. Uh, mo uh, increasing move speed will not make them faster in the water, and unfortunately that kind of stinks. Oxygen will increase. It might increase it. I'm not sure actually. I'll have to take a look and see or if someone wants to let me know down below, just let me know what actually will increase their move speed in water cuz I'm not sure. But anyway, I want to increase their his move speed on land anyway. So we'll be buffing that move speed on the Sarko regardless cuz we want to make them fast. So anyway, the next one and final one is going to be from Daniel Dotry and it says kangaroos are fast to run up the mountain and get metal. That's what we did on Scorched Earth. Now, like I said in the last video, I, I kind of pointed it out um, talking about the kangaroo, but that's what we're going to use it for, I think. The move speed is really good on it, and we'll definitely take advantage of that to go up to the, uh, the metal mountain, which is really close to me, right up the hill, so it's not that far of a run, and I should be a little bit more effective than using a bird. But that's where we're going to stop for these tips. Now, as you can see, uh, 
talking about gameplay now is I've got some dilos down we got our scorpions tamed up and we're about halfway through the base build here so I'm gonna let these uh, dilos tame up and then I'm gonna finish up this base and I'll come back together when this all set and I'll show you what's going on okay so we've got us a bunch of scorpions we've got a bunch of dilos now here as well and I finished capping off this so this is all covered up, so at least these won't get shot from people just trying to like shoot from the mountains or anything. At least they'll be a little bit more safe. So we've got a whole other pen to start filling up. I, I've been complaining about space for the dinos for a while, so I'm really excited to actually put this into use. Now, let's see here. So i put these away, and I think that's where we're going to call it for the day. I mean, we got a lot done. We got a lot of kibble dinosaurs, and we got a whole new pen area on. So I hope you liked how I set up, like, the questions and stuff. I knew this was just going to be kind of like a little bit more straightforward video, you know, taming kibble dinosaurs, not that interesting. So I hope you like how I set this up, and I'll definitely do more in the future. Because you guys have built this community, and... Just looking at my comment section just helps out so many people with just random tips and stuff. So I really appreciate it. You all are friggin' awesome. So anyway, if you like this video, definitely hit that thumbs up and or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. You all have a great rest of your day. And of course, we'll catch you next time.